Yeah, in times of conflict, I think everybody looks towards technology. And while most of these companies are skeptical of adding new technology to their regular business op- operations, I think the realization that tech actually helps them comes afterwards and when they implement it. They really have to look forward. How can we handle this situation? Let's talk about social distancing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to the second episode of Convios on Air, the podcast about the exciting world of leisure, technology, and the best of both worlds, technology in the leisure industry. Today, we will be talking about the center of the leisure industry, the ones passionate about bringing experiences to people, the venues themselves. We will answer the question of what exactly venues are actually saying right now, what they are currently busy with, and how looking at others might help your venue. As current circumstances have changed the market dynamics so enormously, different factors mean different implications for each and every one of us. So it is quite obvious that we shouldn't just assume what exactly is going on with the market or what the venues are currently doing, what they're struggling with and what they're thinking about. We need to talk directly to them. And we thought to give you a real and accurate insight into a vast amount of voices at the same time, we bring in the people who are literally chatting with these venues the entire day. Our business development representatives. Between us, I'm very, very excited to hear about their insights into the market's current state, because who would know better about what different stakeholders in the market are voicing than them? I would like to welcome Patrick and Kai, whom I have on Skype right now. I hope that we're running not into too many technical difficulties. Excuse us if so. But the main thing is that we dropped some good insights to help you get an overview of the market. Welcome, Patrick and Kai. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. Hi, Uh, how are you doing? Thanks so much for being here, guys. Uh, It's really a pleasure to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. To start at the beginning and to give our listeners an overview into what you two do, can you maybe give us a quick overview of your job and a sneak peek into the Convius team of business development representatives? Yeah, of course. Um, As a business development representative, my job consists of contacting companies in um, UK, Ireland, and Scotland, occasionally to the US to sell our products. And this often requires tenacious communication, perseverance, as well as building relationships with these prospective buyers. Yeah, for me, it's more or less the same thing. Um, I'm focusing on the German market. Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. So you guys are basically like the holy grail of market voices right now. I mean, this means that you're both talking to different people every day, right? Yeah, basically different people. Um, Yeah, we get to learn a lot from all kinds of people. Patrick, can you tell me what has been exactly going on? What are the venues voices in between all this noise going on? So overall, there is a clear voice of uncertainty and um, this voice is attained to questions from when is our business opening again to the more extreme and will our businesses open again? And it is my job to sell, of course, but it goes further than that. I try to be the voice of reason with my insight through and perspective through experiences with different points of views, talking to all these different companies and different locations. And of course, to comfort them, but also to tell them what's really important and what to expect. Kai, can you say that you had the same experience? Mm, Yeah, as we were talking to so many companies, you really get to know what their problems are and what their main insecurities are. For example, really, right now it is all about surviving, just surviving this whole lockdown crisis until they can open up again. That's the most important or that's the biggest fear of um, most leisure companies. You said that they are currently worried about uncertainty. So what are they currently doing? What are they saying if you call and discuss their state with them? Yeah, so well, they're they're trying to really figure out on what to do and they base most of their um, actions based on the government. So they, they really try and wait for the government's advice and they act accordingly. 
Yeah, as all companies we touch our leisure industry companies, um, they all have more or less the same fear and the same hope that the government will soon um, uh, lower the regulations and let them reopen again. So you would clearly say the obvious, the reopening is the biggest challenge they are facing. What are the things they are specifically concerned about when thinking about reopening? The biggest concern of them is the visitor limitation, as it is much harder to regulate your visitors. For example, if you look at escape rooms and these virtual reality rooms that depend on people existing in a particular space, they really have problems and are really depending on what measures are going to be taken as far as visitor spreading and restriction goes. Has anyone given you an example of what they're already doing? Yeah, so the bigger venues that exist in a big space are able to really use visitor spread and basically open with limited capacity and use time slots, which is something we we can really help with. So that's really interesting how we um, go together with that. And have you also talked to venues that are not so tech savvy? Because as of now, a lot of venues are starting to use all these digital tools, as ours is as well, of course. And um, yeah, I was wondering, how are those not so tax heavy venues reacting to this change? Yeah, I'd like to think most companies in the leisure industry are not tech savvy at all. And I'd like to also say that um, this outbreak is kind of like a calling for them to move towards and transition towards technical like other industries. So yeah, I think um, there is a rush for them to catch up and implement technology all around their business. Yeah, especially in Germany is in um, when it comes to digitalization really behind. So people there are right now struggling. And it's uh, really interesting how when you call people who are really not tech savvy at all and have like a website from 1998, really now get their eyes opened and really look for companies like, like Colmius, like us, who can offer them uh, such a solution to help them get through this hard time. So yeah, it's really interesting how the mind of the people changes right now. Do you think this is an attitude that changes solemnly because they are forced to due to the current circumstances? And does that also mean that they have a more negative attitude towards it? Because it's not something that they do out of themselves? Or are they also seeing like, hey, this is actually a super big opportunity for me. I, I would say both ways. People are really scared of the internet. People in Germany don't really know much about it and they don't really use it. So um, it is both, it's an opportunity for them to really get into the 21st century and start selling online. But many people are still very uh, scared and skeptical, especially when it comes to us calling them. People are very skeptical because they always think we want to scam them or we want to sell them something they don't need. So yes. it's really hard sometimes to get into the mind of the people and really tell them, hey, We'll, we, want to tr we want to help you, we want to try to help you and to get through this tough phase, to, through this tough crisis, so let us please help you, we don't want to scam you. Yeah, in times of conflict, I think everybody looks towards technology. And while most of these companies are skeptical of adding new technology to their regular business op operations, I think the realization that tech actually helps them comes afterwards and when they implement it. So if it's still a hesitation towards tech, I'm, they tend to realize it after implementation. So you see that once you get through, um, these venues see for themselves that they made a good decision. Without giving away your secret sales formula, can you explain to us what you do to get through to them, to help them see, hey, we should give this a chance and then lead them towards realizing for themselves once they've implemented new technologies like ours. I think the most important thing is this is their only opportunity right now, that they have to have an online presence, that they have to be online. People can't go into your venue, but people can buy tickets up front for September or October. It's still money incoming that could help you survive and really get through this this crisis. To follow up on what Kai says, it's not really 
all about persuading them to look into tech. It's really to understand them, ask them questions, go through their journey together with them. And that way you're able to tackle these things together, basically collaborate to their discussion. So now you've already touched upon the situational components that might be market specific, but also venue specific. What are the things that you believe all of these differing venues have in common although they might be acting in very different verticals or differ greatly in size. So they all share the fact that social distancing is here to stay. No matter what venue, it's all about social distancing. And there's no going around this. And it's important to plan based on the fact that spreading your visitors is of the utmost importance. They are more or less all in the same boat, you could say. And as social distancing is, as Patrick already said, here to stay, you really have to look forward. How can we handle this situation and guarantee our visitors a safe environment? Mostly people will tell me we have these security glasses in front of the check-ins and the, the cashier and make extra paths for people so that, this, that there is a better visitor spread. So the problem is that they are mainly thinking about in-venue measures, which are key to social distancing, of course, but we figured out there's more than just in-venue, right? Yeah, to add to what Kai is saying, I'd like to follow up. When I do ask businesses what their plan is, once government provides guidelines for them to resume operation, the topics normally range from adding sanitization kiosks, um, putting 1.5 meter tapes all around the venue, enforcing as least risk as possible for in, in person contact. And those are all very, very effective measures. But I'd also relate to the adage that the prevention is always better than the cure. What could matter bigger is preventing this before they're even in the venue. So allowing the spread of visitors to happen before people are in, that way you're able to provide the topics of sanitization kiosks, 1.5 meter tapes much easier and efficiently because you've already minimized the risk before the people are in the venue. What you're saying is that many venues skip step one because they're not aware that it exists. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's about it. Uh. So I think currently they're in the stage where they're still in shock they're still uncertain. They really don't know what to do. So they haven't been really listening to any company's pitch. But once I'm able to get through with them and share our technology, that's when they really start to listen. So I think we're still at that phase where nobody, no, no company has a solution yet. So being that first voice to present a valid solution for their concerns is quite comforting to them. And every day, they're more willing to listen to what I have to say then I really hope that for the sake of our industry, this will only continue to rise. This awareness and also consideration for new technologies and new methods in general. I think this is the perfect moment to round this up. I thank you two very, very much for all of your great insights and for this lovely conversation with you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And I also really hope that we gave a voice to some of the problems that venues are currently facing and at the same time also give some answers to a few of those questions that were risen throughout the last weeks. We're already at the end of this episode. My name is Vanessa and it was great bringing to you what has been happening in our market, what venues have been voicing and what we can take away from hearing those voices. If you like our show and you want to know more, check out convius.com or check our blog with all kinds of best practices for leisure venues and great insights into how to handle the current situation. You can find our blog on the blog.convius.com or tune in next week to hear what technologies are actually out there that can help you to tackle your challenges. Have a great day and please join us next time.